So for more, we now welcome a reservist from the Paratroopers Brigade, San Khanim, Matan Ifrach. Matan, thank you so much for being here in studio. So thousands of reservists have been called up since the start of this war. Take us back, if you will, to the 7th of October. Where were you? When did you find out about the terror attack that was unfolding in the south of Israel? Well, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, the 7th of October was, uh, for me, it was a really big mess because I didn't understand what happening. I was at the synagogue and uh, we were praying and I seen a lot of fuss, a lot of people uh, coming and going. And uh, some guy told me that if I'm in the reserve, I need to get back to my phone and like see what happening in the south. After we get back to the, I get back at home in the middle of the prayer and uh, then I get a lot of calls, a lot of messages that told me uh, to come back to the army now. It's, it's a time that we need to, to, to be there. It was like an emergency. It's something that there is protocol of emergency. It was like, this was it. And uh, we go back, uh, we go south. And that's, that's the beginning of our journey until now. So talk to us then about the training that had to happen before you actually joined the operation inside Gaza itself. Yeah, so at first nobody know a lot. I think that the higher rank didn't know anything, nobody really know and uh, nothing. They trained us also for Gaza and also for the North because we didn't know what happened with the North, it also started. And uh, we were, there was a lot of math and we took a path, we chose like, uh, it's not was my decision, of course, but they trained us for Gaza. It was a, it's a different story uh, from uh, Lebanon, uh, from Hezbollah, and uh, we started training for almost like a, a month, a month and a half, until we get uh, into Gaza, until the operation started and they needed us. You say it's a different story being in Gaza compared to training for the north, close to Lebanon, but you were in Gaza back in 2009. So what stood out for you? What are the differences if you're fighting there right now during this current operation? Well, everything is different. 2009, there were no tunnels. Their strategic approach to it, it's different. The soldiers are ready. They need, everything is different. The war is different. Uh, it was uh, in 2009. Ofer was uh, it was an operation, not a war. There is a difference between the two, of them. and uh, this was a full-on war. It was you can see it about uh, all of the brigades are over there, all of the troops, all of the soldiers. Even our equipment is different. There was like uh, a lot of time since 2009. But uh, I think the w one thing that was a game changer, it was, I think, the tunnels that make it a, a different story for us. Certainly many lessons are being learned along the way. And much of the focus is also falling on the risks involved, particularly because of the civilian population where the fighting is unfolding. Talk to us about how this is front and center for soldiers right now. You're fighting to defend the country. You're fighting also protecting your fellow soldiers in your unit. And at the same time, you need to prioritize that Palestinian civilians aren't going to be hurt. How does this factor in while you are fighting? Well, I think it's, uh, it's a thing that only the IDF can really manage. We were at the... Uh, I didn't saw a lot of civilians in Gaza. I saw some civilians in Gaza. We were fighting in civilians. Uh, all the war was happening over there. But it's, uh, it's something that you'd not encounter with it every single day in Gaza. The thing that we came for, our civilians, you know, our, our home, our people were over there, were back uh, uh, at, uh, at Israel. It was... Uh, very uh, uh, meaningful for us. Everybody feels this is this is the most meaningful war that we're gonna have. This is people have children. Uh, this is equivalent equivalent only to to having a child or having like you are protecting everybody now. So this is the this is the the, the difference. So for your first question, did we encounter uh, civilians? Not a lot. Not me actually, uh, and to the feeling of how meaningful it was to us. It was uh, 
the most meaningful things that we ever done. I think it was like independent day. Everybody felt like that. And my son, every soldier has their own personal family back at home waiting for them anxiously hoping and praying that they are safe. You have a particularly unique situation because you became a father during this time. So talk to us about being back in Israel for your son's bris and then having to go and fight the next day. Well, it's, it is difficult, but when you are in reserve, reserve it's like uh, from uh, 22, the age of 22 until 40. It's not that different over there because there's a lot of people that are uh, having their wife. There's a lot of birth. Uh, you feel like it's a baby boom, everybody. Uh, yeah, but uh, but for me personally, uh, it was uh, a bit of emotional. It's my first son. I'm going back into Aza. Everybody is giving you long hugs that make you uh, a bit stressed because it's like they saying goodbye to you. Even your wife, they don't acknowledge that, but it is. This is the hug that they give you. They think this may be the last hug. For me, not seeing my son, like now I'm just like getting back and getting to know him. It's like three months years old. But so it's a, it's, it's a journey, but inside yourself, it wasn't, I wasn't thinking about not going uh, uh, inside, not going like uh, back to my crew, not going back to, to fighting. It was the, it was a hard decision, but I know what was the answer for it. And as you say, you know that part of the fighting is to protect your own family as yeah. well and for generations to come. How did it feel hearing about this dramatic and daring rescue operation that happened in the early hours of Monday morning as a soldier fighting, watching, the whole nation hoping and praying that all the hostages get home safely. The fact that it is compounding and complicating the fighting, knowing that hostages are there. How did you respond personally to hearing about this brazen, successful operation? Well, uh, I think it's uh, everybody talk about it inside of Gaza. This is your dream as a soldier to see some hostages, to rescue them, to be with them. Everybody say, if I take one hostages, I can go out, do my thing. I'm going back to my children, my wife, my family. So uh, we felt a lot of pride. We felt a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, it was, it was, uh, there was a high moral, but in the end of the day, it's a war. And I don't think, I don't want to be, a, to, to say the bad news, but the bad news are coming like day after we had three soldiers that uh, got uh, uh, RPGs and they, they are from my, uh, uh, not platoon, but uh, brigade. So it's every, everything is mixed. Like one day you can be very happy that of course the rescue of the hostages is always on your mind. This is what you want. But uh, the other just, like a few hours later, you will hear about the, 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 the death of your, your, the people that you know. So it's, uh, it's, it's complex. Even your feeling is very, very complex. It's like uh, everything is mixing. So many different emotions, the cost of war, the risks are high, the price is high, which brings me to my next question around PTSD. And you yourself have actually made a movie in the past about this specific Topic. Talk to us about the message from your personal experience, your personal movie. Well, I've done the movie like two and a half years ago. It's called Roots, and it's about a soldier with a PTSD. Um, this is this is transparent, you know. Things uh, you, you can't see it, you can't feel it, but uh, it's inside of them. It's inside of the soldiers. Um, it's, it's, I don't know what's gonna happen now in Israel, but I know that before they were trying to like manage it, trying to, there was trying to organize it, but because of the, the, the amount, I think we are Israel, we are a PTSD country. We are all in PTSD. So it's, a, it's, it's very difficult. I took one subject in my movie and wanted to share with, with crowd, the people who ever wanted to watch, uh, mainly festivals. Um, the experience that PTSD soldier uh, has been through, like uh, I took them in a journey of his 
48 hours, like the 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 immense of uh, of uh, of stress, the things they're going through, and I think that's what I try to like bring into the the viewers. Uh, I think there are gonna be a lot of uh, other PTSD. There is, we know it. Uh, I hope they get treated better than uh, they get treated before. And finally, to that exact point, this war is likely to last for a long time, mm -hmm. a very stressful time, obviously, as you said, for the families of the soldiers as well, not to mention the soldiers, of course, the hearts of the families of the hostages waiting for word on what is going on, as you say, already much PTSD in the country. Do you feel that sufficient support is being given to soldiers like yourself as this war continues briefly? Uh, is it enough? I don't think it's never enough. Uh, there is always more to do. Because it's a, a transparent, it's, it's not illness, but it's wounded. If I was amputated in my arm, you could see it. If I was amputated, you know, you can't see it. You can only feel it, you can only talk to it. I think that uh, we need a lot of compassion now. We need a lot of, uh, they need a lot of help. Uh, this, it's gonna pop up uh, a lot more now. Uh, I hope they get treated. I hope that everything will, will, I don't want the war to stop because I don't think it's, it's the right decision now. This is my uh, personal opinion. But uh, the amount of, of stress that you're going through in Gaza, you're going through in war, if you are at war, someone done something wrong. There is no good days in war. It's only bad days. Uh, it's in your stomach. It's something that you can't explain to nobody else. I think we need to be compassionate. We need to, to, to be a lot more together as a country now and uh, just to, to find the the balance, uh, how we treat those people that are going out, out of uh, war now. Matan Ifrach, thank you so much for being here thank you, in Benita. studio and thank you for sharing your story. A reservist from the Paratroopers Brigade, thank you so much for your thank time you, here Benita. on I24 News. Thank you.